Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear guests, it is my great pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the Human Frontier Science Program Organization and all convening partners in this beautiful, historical, academic setting. And let me thank to the Academy and to the all partners working with us for hosting this important uh, meeting today. I am Secretary General of the Human Frontier Science Program Organization, and I will be uh, moderating the first session of this afternoon. I would like to start by welcoming and asking uh, to come to the stage Honorable Minister Sylvie Retalier, Minister of Science and Education in France. Minister Tali has been um, helpful, more than helpful, in getting the idea which we had together about a year ago to organize such a summit to become a reality. Minister Tali has been also one of the signatories of an important declaration of the science ministers of the G7 nations uh, two months ago in Japan, which mentioned HSSP support into the future. Minister Atelier, may I ask you to come forward to the lectern to deliver your opening remarks. Dear President, uh, dear Minister of Research, Mr. President of the Science Academy, dear uh, Secretary General of the HFSP, or um, dear everyone. First of all, a few words in French, and then I'll move to uh, English for this presentation, just to tell you how honored I am and happy to be here today with you in this historical place. It's a science histor historic place, but also of art and literature. I'm very so happy to be welcoming you here today. I'm delighted to be here today and with you in order to formally open this science summit organized by the Human Frontier Science Program and hosted by the French Academy of Science. We have the pleasure to be gathered in a very prestigious place under the name is La Coupole. And it is really a place full of history since of more than 350 years. The solemn sessions of the Academia take place here. The spirit of discovery and also fundamental research guides us today. The Human Frontier Science Program organization has been established following the 1987 Venice G7 summit, dr driven in particular by the Japanese Prime Minister Nakasone and French President Mitterrand proposed Strasbourg as a host city for the organization. I would like to underline and warmly thank the, the important commitment from Japan in particular, and since the very beginning, together with the other countries belonging to this organization. Since then, key topics, in particular in biology, but also other uh, very important topics, have been addressed by this program. New international collaborations have been announced and young researchers have been encouraged through specific grants. Nowadays, HFSP mission to support excellent international but also interdisciplinary basic life science becomes particularly relevant in addressing the global challenges the world is facing and the world is facing today and tomorrow. The United Nations Agenda for 2030 identifies 
climate change, but also biodiversity, oceans, health, and other sustainable development goals as major challenges in the 21st century. Profound scientific understand, understanding is key to create the policies and solutions humanity must have for transitions to a sustainable future. However, scientific communities are still often divided in ad addressing these challenges. This is especially true of basic life science, but also which has not been connected to the main discourse supporting sustainability transformations, as those conversations have traditionally been the domain on, of environment and sustainability science. By promoting high quality, high risk, and international and transdisciplinary, transdisciplinary basic research, HFSP therefore allows all the scientific communities to cooperate in tackling those major challenges. And I repeat, I repeat, sorry, challenges such as climate change, health, ocean, biodiversity, but also food security, or, and it's very important, social transformation. The French government adopted a similar approach where the main societal challenges are collectively addressed through the cooperation and coordination between the key actors from the level of the ministries, but also to the main actors for research and also, and I think that it's very important, education. Funding for research have been substantially increased, adopted in 2020 and covering the 2021 to the 2030 period. The French uh, uh, research programming law, corresponding to 25 billion euros, aims at improving research fund funding and also evaluation, improving also attractiveness of research careers and establishing an open relationship between science and society. In addition, specific funding, 45 billion euros for research, education and also industry devoted to the main societal challenges such as health, energy or environment have been allocated through an interministerial program named France 2030. Similar actions take place in your countries. We obviously share the necessity to address collectively the global challenges discussed during the science summit today, but also the scientific symposium tomorrow. I would like to wish you all to wish you fruitful discussions and to enjoy, to enjoy all the high-level presentations foreseen during this today. And I know that you have a lot of presentation speech uh, to tackle these different challenges that we share in the different countries, but also the different research community. So enjoy your conference and thank you very much. I would like to thank Honorable Minister Etalier, but also thank uh, once more for all the support which French government is giving to the HSSPO and to the international scientific community. I would like now to invite Professor Alain Fischer, who is the president of the academy, and uh, also uh, speaking to us on behalf of all other convening partners of this conference. Merci. Madame la ministre de l'Éducation nationale et de la recherche, chère Dear Sylvie Rotaillot, merci beaucoup pour vos propos introductifs. Uh, Monsieur le chancelier de l'Institut de France, uh, messieurs les secrétaires Institute perpétuels, France, cher Étienne uh, Gis et Antoine Triller, dear, uh, dear Mr. Yosei Ide, State Minister of Education, Culture, Sport, Science and Technology of Japan, 
Dear Ms. Fuse Oda, State Minister of Economy, Trade and Industry of Japan. Dear Mr. Hirofumi Nakasone, former Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology of Japan. Dear Mr. Xinku, Deputy Director General of UNESCO. Dear Professor Shige um, Kazu Nagata, President of the International Human Frontier Science Program Organization and Summit co-host. Dear Mr. Pavel Kabat, Secretary General of the Human Frontier Science Program Organization, dear Presidents of Science Academy from the United States of America and Finland, dear Ambassadors and Country Representatives, dear Presidents, Directors and Representatives of Research Bodies and Funding Agencies, dear Friends, dear Colleagues, Ladies and Gentlemen. L'usage dans ce lieu historique et prestigieux est de s'exprimer en français. Uh, vous prendre, comprendrez néanmoins que dans les circonstances place, de cette conférence, je continue en anglais. So I will now switch to, uh, to English. In It English. is a great honor for the French Academy of Science to host in this prestigious and historical place the high-level summit organized by the Human, Human Frontier Science Program. The title of the, uh, of the summit and, and the symposium tell it all. Fundamental life science meets climate, environment, and sustainability. The challenge ahead for all of us. As a biologist myself, I know well the role of HS HFSP organization is playing in supporting the best basic life science research worldwide since so many years. On a personal note, I would like to add that I am particularly pleased to highlight the input of his, its president, Professor Shigekazu Nagata, dear Shige, who is a great scientist and an old friend of mine. I would like to also to address a special welcome to the Ukrainian delegation. I am pleased they could be with us and express their thoughts and needs for the reconstruction of science and education in their country. The symposium that is going to take place will testify of the critical function of science in enlightening the many key issues our world is facing today. More than ever, scientific research, including its very basic components, is required to raise questions, analyze problems, and find solutions. The intricate interaction between scientists and politicians who have to take the decisions is therefore an essential asset. This is a strong basis to establish trust from the citizens of our countries. The two-day symposium that will follow, organized by HFSP, based on its scientific legitimacy, will, as this afternoon's forum, I am convinced, contribute to develop new ideas, bridges, and partnerships as advocated by the Human Frontier Science Program organization. I just congratulate them for this initiative and wish you all a successful time during these three days in Paris. I am now eager to hear the important contributions to come from the many colleagues. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Fischer, and once more thank you for hosting us here. I would like now to invite a special, very special guest of this summit, uh, Mr. Hirofri Munakasone. Mr. Munakasone is the former Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science in Japan. He is currently a prominent member of the Japanese Parliament, but he is also son of the former Prime Minister of Nakasone, who proposed to the G7 leaders in 1987 to establish HSSPO. And uh, Mr. Nakasone is still very much helping to HSSP at the level of the Japanese and international discussions. Mr. Nakasone, can I invite you to come to the stage? Good afternoon, my name is Nakasone Hirofumi. Uh, I'm going to speak, uh, make a speech in Japanese, so please use your headphone. Rutaio Daijin, Nagata Sensei, 
尊敬すべき参加者の皆様、紳士淑女の皆様、本日はハイレベルサミットの開催、誠におめでとうございます。この記念すべき会合に出席することができましたことは、私にとりましても大変光栄なことでございます。ルタイオ大臣をはじめ、本日のホストであるフランス政府、present here. The enormous development that this program has seen is thanks to the year long efforts of all scientists. AFSPO's board and Secretary General, Mr. Cabot, and everyone else involved in the program, as well as the support and collaboration of all related governments and research support organizations. My father, Yasuhira. Yasuhiro Nakasone, the initiator of this program, has passed away four years ago at the age of 101, but I'm sure he's watching over this event with joy and excitement. Back in the 1980s, my father, as Prime Minister of Japan, expected the benefits of science and technology to mankind to reach unimaginable heights. But At the same time, he also saw the risks that genetic manipulation in life sciences could pose to the existence and dignity of mankind, and thought that such problems should be dealt with on a global level. At the 1983 G7 summit in Williamsburg, US, it was decided in response to my father's call to hold a Conference of Life Science and Mankind. The conference was eventually held six times the first time in Japan, the second here in France, and subsequently in the other G7 countries. It was in this flow of things that the idea of the Human Frontier Science Program gestated. I'm sorry, and my father. Proposed it to the world leaders present at the G7 summit in Venice in 1987. As you can guess from this background, the program is the very result of the dialogue between politicians and scientists. I don't need to point out again the subsequent developments and spectacular results of the Human Frontier Science Program. What I do want to emphasize here, however, is that it was the solidarity between scientists that underpinned the development of the program. I don't believe the program would have, been, would have succeeded without the concerted efforts of the International Review Committee in screening the most outstanding, outstanding research projects and the collaboration between research teams. Well, I'm sure the most recent developments in life sciences are beyond the wildest dreams of the world leaders back in the 1980s. Science, however, never ceases to evolve. Just when you think you are there, new horizons open up before you. Driven by a genuine intellectual curiosity, scientists challenge the frontiers of mankind and our world to generate knowledge. That enriches our lives both culturally and materially. Yet, it is crucial that we give enough thought to the way we should use this generated knowledge, which is with its tremendous potential, to the benefit of society. For the benefit of all humankind, that is the ultimate goal. Of the Human Frontier Science program, program. And it is exactly what my father wished for. At the G7 summit in Japan in May this year, 
It was confirmed in the minister's communique of the G7 Science and Technology Ministers meeting in Sendai that this initiative will be continued. During the G7 summit in Hiroshima then, the importance of the Human Frontier Science Program was stressed and understood by the G7 members. With this initiative in mind, the summit communique confirmed the will of the G7 to support the development of advanced technology needed to drive innovation, as well as research infrastructure and networks of highly skilled human resources. And to promote to this end, the, internationally, the international mobility and circulation of scientists. In order to advance meaningful research, it is essential that we continue to support it. I was told that when Japan stressed the importance of the program to the other GC, G7 members, Italy, who will hold the next G7 pres presidency, responded that strengthening the cooperation in the scientific and technological domain is on the top of their list, which really reassures me. At this high-level summit, all of you, politicians, scientists, and leaders of the research support organizations that give scientists enormous support, have gathered to discuss how to, de how to challenge the common human frontier for science and technology to contribute to a sustainable world and how to bridge fundamental life science and environmental science to this end. I sincerely hope that today's high-level summit and the International Scientific Symposium can be a significant starting point for the further development of the program and the future of all humankind. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nakasone. Let me now invite um, Honorable Jose Ide, State Minister of Education, Culture, Sports and Science Technology Ministry of Japan, to deliver his um, opening remarks. Minister Taiyo, Professor Nagata, dear, dear invitees, esteemed participants from the member countries of the International Human Frontier Science Program Organization, everyone. It's my great pleasure to speak to you all today at this high-level science summit. I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to the government of France HF, SPO, and other related organizations for their efforts in organizing this summit. International cooperation plays a pivotal role in advancing scientific and technological frontier by <laughs> leveraging the collaborative expertise of researchers across national borders. Moreover, it, foster, <laughs> it fosters knowledge researchers, oh, sorry, it first does knowledge exchange and <laughs> nurtures an interconnected global network of researchers. With this in mind, I would like to highlight the G7 Science and Technology Minister meeting in Sendai, Japan, last month where the minister em emphasized the importance of international mobility of scientists and the exchange of human resources. The communique included the following text. In the field of life science, which is closely linked to innovations to address global issues such as climate change, food insecurity, and global health threats, 
the Human Frontier Science Program, an international research support program established by G7 as the initiative of former Japanese Prime Minister Nakasone Yasuhiro at the 1987 Venice Summit has promoted cutting-edge international joint research and human resource development, achieving significant results in the process. G7 members and HFSP countries that share our values will continue this pioneering initiative. This summit is timely because it will discuss the strategic and science policy implications of linking basic life sciences to climate change and other sustainability issues. The power of science, technology, and innovation is indispensable for lifting social issues into engines of growth. In Japan, the Council for Science, Technology, and Innovation, chaired by the Prime Minister, formulates comprehensive strategies for science and technology to address national and social issues in a, in a timely and appropriate manner. The government is united in promoting various policies to advance the science, technology, and innovation basic plan, which addresses many of the issues that will be discussed at this summit. With the power of science, technology, and innovation, we must realize an all-inclusive society in a future world, working together with countries that respect regional, gender, language, and cultural diversity, and share the principles of freedom and trust. Japan should play a central role in this. Based on this brief, Japan promotes science, technology, and innovation policies, and it will strive to address global challenges, such as climate change. We are also promoting a package of university reforms, strengthening research capabilities, enhancing the development of innovative human resources, promoting distinctive universities as regional center of excellence and building a startup ecosystem. We promote both strategic research and development at national research institutions and basic research and human resource development based on free thinking at universities. In order to strengthen the development of human resources capable of innovative and creative thinking, we will accelerate efforts to reorganize university faculties and foster development and training beyond the traditional boundaries of humanities and sciences. Furthermore, it will accelerate pioneering research by young researchers. I believe that I believe that measures to strengthen human resource development are related to the theme of this summit. In the 30 plus years since HFSP was founded, it has catalyzed many innovative and inter <coughs> interdisciplinary collaborations in the life sciences, which are essential for humanity's survival, public health, and resilience in the face of global challenges. As some of you may know, among the past awardees of HFSP research grants, there are 28 Nobel Prize winners. Many researchers who have received HFSP postdoctoral -doc post fellowship, fellowships also going to receive support in the form of research grants. We believe that the great success of the HFSP is indicative not only of its importance to basic research through innovative and interdisciplinary international collaboration, but also of the value it brings through its promotion of human resource development. Finally, 
I would like to express my gratitude to all those who contributed to today's commemorative event and to promise that we'll continue to support the HFSP together with the other member countries so that it will continue to be a highly regarded initiative among researchers around the world and for the prosperity of future generations. I conclude my remarks by expressing my sincere hope that this summit will provide many important insights for the science and technology policy of each of our countries. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you. I would like now to invite uh, Honorable Fusai, Madam Fusai Ota, State Minister of Economy, Trade and Industry of Japan, for her opening remarks. Ministers, distinguished delegates, Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am Ota Fusae, State Minister of Economy, Trade, and Industry of Japan. I am very pleased that the Science Summit is being held today as a part of the Human Frontier Science Program. First of all, I would like to express my sincere grat gratitude to the host of the summit, Dr. Silvi Hurtayo, Minister of Higher Education and Research, and Professor Pavel Kabat, Secretary General of the International HFSP Organization. I would also like to thank all the related organizations that have made efforts to organize the summit. Our ministry has taken the initiative in the HFSP since its establishment in the 1980s. We are pleased to see that the HFSP has achieved significant results in its more than 30-year history. We are proud of the fact that 28 Nobel laureates have been produced from among the awardees of HFSP research grants. Japan has been the largest country contributor to the HFSP. Our ministry and the Ministry of Education have supported the HFSP as a joint budget through the Japan Agency for Medical Research and Development. Together with those two organizations, our ministry has will con uh, continue to support to HFSP. We have great expectations for the promotion of innovation, innovative research and the frontier of life sciences. The summit is the first global effort to bridge the basic life science and environmental sci science communities at the ac academic, policy making, and funding levels. Compared to when the HFSP was first established, the global R&D landscape has changed dramatically. To uncover the potential that lies at the frontiers of science and to address global scale societal issues. The HFSP must now take the lead in, friend, in finding solutions. The establishment of international and interdisciplinary research collaboration is essential for the development of 
a sustainable society. Our minister expresses, our ministry expresses, expresses heartfelt support for this summit. We believe that the summit will strongly promote such effort. Life science is a field that is a part, particular focus for Japan. With designing a future society for our lives as a theme, Japan hosts the Osaka Kansai Expo in 2025. This expo is designed as a laboratory for a future society where new ideas will be implemented in society. I hope that achievements of HFSP's activities and today's discussion could contribute to the expo in some meaningful way. I look forward to seeing you again in Osaka in two years. Finally, I would like to thank all of you for your contribution to the program and wish you all the best in your future endeavors. I hope that today's summit will lead to a great achievement. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I'd like to thank again to honorable ministers, both ministers, and underline again how grateful the Human Frontier Science Organization is receiving such a long-term support from Japan, which is provided by both ministers. Thank you very much again. I would like now to invite the Honorable Hsin Ku, Deputy Director General of UNESCO, to deliver his opening statement. Monsieur le Président. Dear President, dear uh, Secretary General, dear Minister, Excellencies, and uh, Mr. Ladies and Gentlemen Scientists, and uh, uh, Mrs. Audrey Vanley, this is a great honor to be here today. And this is a pleasure to be here with all of you and to be able to speak face to face. And we owe this to scientists, biologists, researchers from across the world uh, whose research allowed us to get out of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, this is also because of them that we are dealing with another uh, emergency, which is climate change. It reminds us that the, the future of humanity is still uh, up to what happens in the laboratory. So in the midst of this challenge, we need to collectively reshape our relation to, uh, to, li to life. And so our fu fundamental life sciences are essential in this area because they talk about love and uh, the amazement for everything that lives. Uh, science is uh, is the daughter of amazement. So with this amazed sight and uh, look at science, there is this will to protect a world uh, of which we know the value. And this aware, but this awareness is not sufficient. We also need to find ways to act. And again, fundamental science is a glimmer of hope. The hope to develop uh, high-end technologies in the fields of technology, health, agriculture, and uh, carbon neutrality. The hope to find uh, uh, sustainable solutions to current challenges. In the face of these challenges, fundamental science is a way to us, for us to have a methodology. And this scientific method uh, rooted in experiment 
is uh, making our spirit more acute and uh, makes us more independent and free, which we absolutely need. We need sciences, but the sciences also need us. And UNESCO works tirelessly to support them. This International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development, proclaimed by the United Nations, is an opportunity for all our member states to step up their efforts at our side. This year, launched almost 12 months ago at UNESCO, has already featured 350 events in 45 countries, attended by more than 200,000 people online. We have gathered ministers, decision makers, Nobel Prize winners, and private sector representatives to send a simple message. We will not achieve the sustainable development goals without investing heavily in the basic sciences. Nor will we achieve these goals alone. That is why today and for the past 75 years, UNESCO has called for more scientific cooperation. This cooperation is a cornerstone of our recommendation on open science which seeks to make science more effective, but also more just. Throughout our history, we have defended this cooperation at the highest level. For example, through the projects such as CERN, which was created under the auspices of UNESCO and led to the discovery of the Higgs boson. And we work to keep this cooperation alive even in challenging circumstances. I am thinking of the CESAN synchrotron light source where scientists from across the Middle East, including Israel and Palestine, work together. To ensure that these efforts bear fruit in the long term, we need young people so that all young scientists, especially women, can play their part. This is why we support the talented young female scientists all over the world through the L'Oreal UNESCO for Women in Science Young Talents programs. And why last week we awarded five young scientists from all five continents the UNESCO Al Fawzan International Prize for promotion of the young scientists in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Across the globe, UNESCO is also working to advance scientific education. In East Africa, for example, where an online and a radio program has reached more than 11 million pupils a majority of whom are girls. This is essential for young people to keep taking up careers in science and foster hope for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, as we look to, the, to this future, the basic sciences can help us chart a path, a path towards a greener, fairer world. Let's take this path together. Thank you very much. Merci. And also, Anikato Kazaimas. Thank you very much. Thank you again, uh, Deputy Director General of UNESCO. And I would like now to invite uh, Professor Shige Katsun Nagata, Shige, President of the uh, Board of Trustees of HSSPO. Okay, thank you. So, bonjour, <laughs> not me. <laughs> Bonjour, so Dr. Minitore Rutai, Dr. Ansham Minitore Nakasone, and Dr. Minitore Deta Ide, and Dr. Minitore Deta Ota, Monsieur Ku, Professor Fischer, one of my best friends, and Professor Hoffman, 
and Professor and Monsieur Alleman and, and participants distinguées, Mesdames et Monsieur, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm deeply uh, honored yes. to welcome you to the High Level Science Summit on behalf of the International Human Frontier Science Program Organization. I thank the French government, the French Academy of Science, and many other organizations supporting this meeting. The International Science Summit and Scientific Symposium are momentous event for our organization. Inspired by the outcome of the recent G7 meeting in Japan, we assembled influential figures to discuss the future of science. In reflecting the history of our program, I want to share my impressive experience. Last summer, Professor Kabat and I visited Mr. Yasutaka Nakasone, a grandson of our former minister, Yasuhiro Nakasone. Mr. Yasutaka Nakasone who told us the following story. When Human Frontier Science Program initially launched in 1987, he was a student in elementary school. The Prime Minister, his grandfather, explained to him about this program, Human Frontier Science Program, most of which budget is covered Japanese tax money. The grandson asked his grandfather what kind of profit can Japan get from this program. The Prime Minister replied, Yes, Taka, this program has nothing to do with the profit of whole Japan. I'm sorry. It is not expecting immediate return. It is an investment for humanity. If it benefits humankind in the decades, it will be more than enough. This touching story deepened my understanding of the Nakasone's vision for Human Frontier Science Program and renewed my sense of responsibility as the president of this organization. This founder's belief has attracted many countries. The, the program began at among these seven countries, but now expanded to 17 members. We expect many other countries to join in the future. The worldwide cooperation among scientists and the support from the member country made this program the most prestigious funding program in the world. As Prime Minister Nakasone predicted, this program has indeed contributed to humankind. While it, it has been focusing on fundamental research, it has yielded many astonishing outcomes that impact our life. The most prominent example is the development of messenger RNA vaccine for COVID-19. Without knowing how cells make messenger RNA, how cells make protein, and how the immune system develops in our body, we never had this vaccine. We will continue to support basic life science. Simultaneously, we want to promote the benefit of basic life science for the good of humanity. I hope this high-level science summit and scientific symposium provide pro platform to host this project. I hope this event will be very helpful, fruitful for all participants. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Shige, for these moving words. And to close the opening um, 
section of the uh, of this afternoon, I would like to invite uh, Luc Allemand. Luc is uh, Secretary General of the International Year of Basic Science for Sustainability, UN initiative, already introduced by Deputy Director General of UNESCO. And this summit and symposium are, of course, contribution to this year of basic science for sustainability. Thank you, Pavel. Madame la Ministre. Madame la Ministre. Madam Minister, dear Perpetual Secretaries. Mrs. and Mr. Director, Secretary General. Dear scientists, ladies and gentlemen, the steering committee of the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development, promulgated by the United Nations General Assembly and placed under the auspices of UNESCO, particularly welcomes this high-level summit organized at the initiative of HFSPO. Eight years ago already, the member states of the United Nations have agreed on the 2030 Agenda, an ambitious program to ensure a balanced, sustainable, and inclusive development of the planet. Scientists, like all other citizens, are directly concerned by this agenda. Moreover, they are in an exceptional position to provide key contribution to its achievement, bringing together basic sciences from different perspectives to improve and extend our basic knowledge of nature as it is proposed today through this high-level summit and in the two next days, is certainly one of the best ways for all scientists to serve this agenda. Engaging with the highest authorities of states from all over the world, as well as we citizens, to determine how basic sciences could be even more useful for humanity to progress toward a better world, is another goal of the international year that is shared with this summit. These are the reasons why, on behalf of the steering committee, I thank you all for being here. We are looking forward to your discussions to establish a new framework for basic sciences and their relationships to the 2030 Agenda, and to new actions where science will take its full part on the path of sustainability. It is all the more important as a steering committee together with over 100 national science academies, learned societies and research networks is supporting the initiative currently discussed between several member states of the United Nations General Assembly for an international decade of all sciences for sustainability. Thank you for your attention. I would like to conclude the opening uh, statements section by thanking again to all honorable guests, ministers, state ministers, director generals and all the speakers, and specifically thanking for all the words of support you uh, communicated to us, not only about HSSP but about the notion of basic science importance for our future, future of humanity. Thank you very much for your contribution.